Shalom. You ready to get back into the Word of God? Praise the Lord. Let's go to uh, Philippians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 23. Philippians chapter 4. You got your Bibles? All right, let's begin. Verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. The Apostle Paul, who is a disciple of Jesus Christ, is ministering to the Philippians, who are also Hebrew Israelites. The Apostle Paul is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. He's also a Roman citizen. The Philippians are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom that was scattered abroad among the Gentiles living in Philippi. That's what you have to understand about the scriptures to keep them in context. People think the Apostle Paul is ministering to everyone that's not of Israel. When Jesus said, go minister and preach to the Gentiles, they thought, most people think that Paul is ministering to people that's not of Israel, but that's not true. He is ministering to Israel. He's ministering to the ten tribes of the northern kingdom that scattered among the Gentiles. They are not Gentiles. They're scattered among the Gentiles. But when they sinned against the Lord, that's why the Lord scattered them. They were no longer referred to as Israel. The southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin referred to them as Gentiles, referred to, me, referred to them as uncircumcised or heathens or, or whatever location that they were living. So they didn't go by the title of Israelites anymore. In this case, they're living in Philippi, so they're going by the, uh, the location of Phil Philippians. That's where they live. But they are actually Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. You got to understand the word of God is for Israel, is to Israel, is from Israel. God called Israel. He chose Abraham and his descendants after him forever. Isaac, Jacob, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And Jesus is a Hebrew Israelite. He's of the, he's of the tribe of Judah. And so Jesus... He came to save his people, who is Israel, all of the 12 tribes. <laughs> That's who the scriptures are for. <clears throat> so he's talking to the Philippians, who are Israelites. He's saying, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Because this is the people that he's ministering to. This is his work in the Lord. <clears throat> He said, y'all are my joy and my crown. This is what I'm laboring for. You're my fruit. And so that's what we all need to be doing, laboring for the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, "Labor for not, don't labor for the bread that perish, but labor for the bread that don't perish. So that's laboring for the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is coming back for Israel and he, the scripture said his reward is with him to give every man according to the work he's done, the, the deeds done in the body. So you got to have some fruit when the Lord comes back. You got to live your life for the Lord. If you say Jesus is your Lord and Savior, Jesus said, well, why call me Lord if you don't do what I say? <laughs> And he's not your Lord. If you don't do what he say, he's not your Lord. You're just saying words. You worship him with your mouth, but your heart is far from him. Verse 2, he said, I beseech you, you do this, you owe this, and, be, and beseech you, sent you, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. So these are his fellow workers in the Lord. And he's... Uh, admonishing us that we should be of the same mind. Jesus said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, the love that you have one toward another. So that's what we're supposed to be walking in as children of God, love toward one another, obeying the scriptures, having the same mind. 
There's still a lot of strife and confusion and division. The Lord didn't call us to be divided. A house divided cannot stand. So that's why a lot of us are not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said that straight is the gate, narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. <laughs> but broad is the way that lead to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. Christianity is that broad way. Many, most people think and believe that Jesus came to start Christianity. In your 501c3 corporations, the Antichrist church system, your pastors, preachers, and teachers are per perpetuating that situation. They're perpetuating that Jesus came to start Christianity and it's Salvation is for everybody. Jesus says salvation is of the Jews. It's from the Jews. It's for the Jews. It's for the people of Israel. God established his covenant with Abraham. God has a chosen people in the earth. You got to understand God's character and nature. When the Lord delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, he had to deal with Pharaoh. For the way Pharaoh treated his people. He wouldn't let them go. And then when the Lord did deliver us. <laughs> the Lord had to deal with us. Because of our unbelief. We were in the wilderness 40 years because of unbelief. Until all those folks that was unbelieving died off. And so the Lord is serious. He, about his people. You got to act right. You got to do right. But understand this also. Uh. Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. The scripture said God loved Jacob but hated Esau. So that's the character and nature of God. People want to say, God loved everybody. God made a distinction. He made a difference between Jacob and Esau. So he don't love everybody. He loved his people, his chosen people, Israel. <laughs> But people don't understand that because your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system have deceived you. That's why Jesus said, many are going to come in my name and deceive many. They're telling you that, oh, uh, Jesus came to start Christianity. It's for everybody now. No, it's not. <laughs> I told you. The 501c3 corporation, they're perpetuating a lie that Jesus came to save everybody. Jesus didn't come to save everybody. He came to save his people. Just like God said, he chose Israel. He chose Jacob. He, hate, he loved Jacob and hated Esau. Same way, Jesus is of Jacob. Jesus is an Israelite. He's of the seed of Abraham. <clears throat> God didn't choose everybody else in the whole wide world. People want to say, well, well Israel sinned. Yeah, they sinned, but God still loved them. That's why he sent Paul to preach to them. <laughs> it's 12 tribes. The southern kingdom is Judah and Benjamin called Jews. People think when you say Jews, you're talking about all of Israel. The Jews is only the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. And then people think the people over in the land called the nation of Israel, that they're Is they're, they are not Israel. They was established as a nation in 1948, a nation state. But they are not of the descendant of Israel, of, of Abraham. They're not of the uh, seed of Abraham. They're not of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> They're not Hebrew Israelites. They are Ashkenaz, Khazarians, Japheth Gentiles, and also Edomites. They've taken over the land by fraud. That's backed up in the scripture. That's why the Lord is coming back to take back the land that he promised to Abraham. So those people are of the synagogue of Satan. They say they're Jews and they do lie. They are not God's chosen people over in the land. But everybody believes that that's God's chosen people. And your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system perpetuate that situation also. Let you think and believe, oh, that's Israel over there. No, Israel is scattered to the four winds. That's why Jesus 
It's coming back to gather us. We're all in the land of our captivity. We're in Egypt again. The scripture says you will go back into Egypt again in ships. We were brought to this land in slave ships. We're in the land of our captivity. Jesus said you would be led away captive into all nations. That's what happened to us. All of Israel is in captivity. All of Israel is scattered. Jesus said until the time, uh, Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles. Even until this day, Jerusalem is still trodden down of the Gentiles. It's, it, the temple is no more in Jerusalem. <laughs> the people over there are not Israelites. They're Gentiles. Jephet Gentiles. He said, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. These are the times of the Gentiles. They are the ruling class. They were the ruling class during the time that, of Jesus' earthly ministry. Israel was under Roman occupation. <laughs> The southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. Rome was over them. Rome is still over them. Rome is still over us. Rome is the ruling class. And all the European nations, the America and Russia, they're the, they're, they're the ruling class. That's the people that Jesus is talking about. The Gentiles, Jephet Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And the times of the Gentiles won't be fulfilled until the Lord Jesus comes back. So the scripture, Paul is admonishing us to be of the same mind. You can't be of the same mind if you ain't studying the scriptures. <clears throat> Verse 3, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. <laughs> so, our names, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, have our names have been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. We are to work and labor together. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. And so Paul was encouraging them to, to, to help those women which labor with him in the gospel. We all supposed to be laboring in the gospel. That's what we supposed to be doing. Our names are written in the book of life, but it can be blotted out if we don't obey the scripture. If we walk in unbelief, we won't make it into the kingdom of heaven. The same way when the Lord delivered the children of Israel from Egypt and they was in the wilderness a lot of them didn't make it into the promised land because of unbelief when the Lord comes back he said only a remnant of Israel will be saved because a lot of us are still in unbelief Jesus said when he comes back will he find faith in the earth a lot of us are still in unbelief Jesus said that you have to forsake your own life to, to be his disciple if you don't forsake your own life, you can't be his disciple. Everybody want to do their own thing. Go ahead and do your own thing. <laughs> you ain't going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Your name will be blotted out of the book of life. Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. That's our strength in the Lord is rejoicing, being content with such things as we have. We are a downtrodden people. We are scattered people. We are servant people. We're servants of the Lord and we're serving our enemies. And so the only thing we can do is rejoice in the Lord. That's our strength. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. If you want strength in the Lord, be grateful and be thankful that you're the people of God, that you're God's chosen people, that he's watching over you. He's keeping you safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord always, not just sometimes <laughs> when things are going well. When things not going well, rejoice in the Lord. Verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. 
Don't be out here gallivanting around and just doing anything and everything you're big and bad enough to do. The Lord is soon to come. And if he ain't finding you working, your work's going to be undone. He said, occupy until I come. <laughs> A lot of y'all out here just living it up. See, that's what happened to the children of Israel in the wilderness. Moses has went up to the mountain <laughs> to get the commandments. They were down there partying, having a good old time. Then made a golden calf. And so the Lord is the same way. He, he's coming back. He's blessing us. And a lot of us are just acting a fool, forgetting about the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> See, they, didn't, they weren't thinking about going into the promised land. They were just thinking about, oh, it's a party. <clears throat> and that's all everybody want to do is party. <clears throat> like the uh, prodigal son. Give me my inheritance now. I want it now. <laughs> I don't want to wait. Then when it was all gone, <laughs> then he's like, uh-oh, I don't know what to do. I, I guess I'll go back and, and ask my father for forgiveness. At least he had sense enough to do that. The scripture says that all the angels rejoice over one sinner that re repents. <laughs> if you need to repent, repent right now, but you need to get it right with the Lord. Don't be procrastinating, thinking you got forever. Tomorrow ain't promise. You got to live right every day, not just on Sunday. <laughs> Everybody go to church, think they done did God a favor. Lord, I'm at church. It's Sunday. I did you. I, I served you. That ain't serving the Lord. You got to serve the Lord every day with your whole heart. That's what the scripture say. He's looking for the true worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. It's not a place. It's not a location. God looks at your heart. You think you're fooling somebody. You ain't fooling God. <laughs> Verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Yeah, God knows what's in your heart. But it's by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto the Lord. He knows what you have need of even before you ask. But ask and you shall receive. <clears throat> but don't ask amiss. You know, that's the problem. Most of us ask amiss. You know, to consume it up on our own lust. What you need to understand is everything that we say and do, our actions, reactions, our whole purpose in life is for the kingdom of heaven. To lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the kingdom of heaven. That's, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. But that's our problem. We don't seek first the kingdom of heaven. We seek all the other things, but we ain't seeking first the kingdom of heaven. So we got it twisted. <laughs> we need to go back and research the scriptures. What Jesus is saying, there is nothing in this lifetime that's more important than the kingdom of heaven. There's nothing more valuable than the kingdom of heaven. No matter what you own or possess or whatever your needs are, there's nothing more important and valuable than the kingdom of heaven. This life is temporary and everything in it. You're not going to be here forever. You're going to be somewhere in eternity forever. That's why it's called eternity. You're either going to be in the kingdom of heaven or the alternative is the lake of fire. The scripture said, fear God because <laughs> he can cast both body and soul into the lake of fire. So you need to fear God and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. Obey God's word. Don't just say, yeah, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. But you don't do nothing about it. Jesus didn't call Christians. He called disciples. People that would obey his word. The Christian is a man-made construct to include everybody in the whole wide world. That's why Jesus didn't come to start Christianity. He come to save his people from their sin. He didn't come to start a religion. He didn't come to start 
Christianity. He come to save his people. <laughs> Christianity is a religion. It's not what Jesus came to start. Where we at? Uh, verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. If you ain't got the peace of God, you're a troubled soul. And the thing about it is, all the things that you're troubling about, Jesus will cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. He cares for us. <laughs> but the scripture said, And the peace of God which pass all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. But we trying to bear our own burdens and, and carry our own loads when Jesus had cast all our cares upon him. <laughs> but the problem is because we're not seeking the kingdom of heaven. We're seeking all these earthly things, which is going to pass away, which is just temporary. Your job, your family, all that stuff. Jesus said, this is my family, the one that hear the word of God and keep it and do it. You got to believe the word of God and you got to do what it says. But a lot of y'all just want to believe and think that's enough. That's not enough. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are, are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So the obvious question is, what are you thinking on? What is your mind on consistently on a daily basis? If it's not on the kingdom of heaven, then what is it on? It... Only thing it's supposed to be on is the kingdom of heaven. Striving to enter in at that straight gate. The narrow way. But everybody want to go that broad way. That Christianity way. Keep, keep going that way. You're going to end up not making it into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and see in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So Paul was encouraging the Philippians to continue in the word of God. He said, look at my manner of life, the way I'm living. To serve the Lord. To seek the kingdom of heaven. So he said, which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. Do that. And the God of peace shall be with you. So we have the word of God before us, before our eyes. Pick it up, read it, and study it. It's our life. It's our heritage. It's our culture. It's our history. It's everything that we need in this life. Man shall not live by bread alone. Now when I say man, I'm talking the Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham because that's who the word of God is for. We cannot live by bread alone but we have to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's why the word of God is following us. Wherever we go the Lord has sent his word to follow us. He said he, his word would not return unto him void, but will accomplish that which he pleased. The Lord ch chasing us because he loves us. He wants us to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. That's what we're supposed to be dwelling on and thinking on. Getting into the kingdom of heaven. Everything else in this lifetime is temporary. <clears throat> if you're up or you're down, it's temporary. Don't worry about that. Just stay focused on the kingdom of heaven. 
Verse 10, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you, you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. So Paul is again uh, admonishing them about how they entreated him in the ministry. He said, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again. As brothers and sisters in the Lord, we have to watch out for one another and care for one another, not being greedy and taking advantage of each other like your 501c3 corporations Antichrist church system, the pastors, preachers, and teachers, talking about bring me your tithe. <laughs> They're making merchandise of you. They're taking advantage of you. We're supposed to take care of each other, but they're taking advantage of you. The only people robbing God is your pastors, preachers, and teachers of the 501c3 corporation. They're the ones that are robbing God because they're robbing God's people. Verse 11, now that I speak in, in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am what therewith to be content. That's what we need to learn as the body of Christ. Israel is the body of Christ. Israel is the church. Don't get it twisted. All the 12 tribes of Israel is the church. All the 12 tribes of Israel is the body of Christ. Paul said, now that I speak in respect of want, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. We have to learn how to be content as the body of Christ. It's not about the stuff. People get so caught up on stuff. Whether you blessed to overflowing, or whether you living in a, a one bedroom shack. It doesn't matter. Be content. That's what we need to learn to do. But we need to learn to share with each other. But see, your 501c3 corporations, Antichrist church system, the pastors, preachers, and teachers don't teach you that. It, it, it talks about, you know, you being blessed and you getting yours. and <laughs> it's, it's talking about all this humanistic stuff. But it's not sharing the gospel of the kingdom. We're supposed to share what we have with one another. If we see a brother and sister in need, we're supposed to reach out to that brother and sister and help them out. But it's not like that. Because your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers, is not telling you to do that. They don't even tell you that you're Israel. <laughs> They're just trying to get more members. So their congregation could be filled so they can have more tithes. So that's why I say, they say it's for everybody. It's Christianity. Yeah, it's for everybody. Come on in. We got lots of room. Just bring your tithe. Become a member. You need somebody to watch over your soul. <laughs> you need a church home. So they take the scriptures out of context and they take advantage of you. Verse 12, I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. That's how we're supposed to live this lifetime, living toward the kingdom of heaven, looking toward the kingdom of heaven. Whether we're full or whether we're hungry, <laughs> we got to look toward the kingdom of heaven. We have to be, if we have to be a base. You know, be of low estate, so be it. Whether we are bound or whether we suffer need or want. That's the scripture. That's the word of God. It's not about seeing how you can get your needs met. <laughs> We're supposed to help each other out. That's how we get our needs met. <laughs> Verse 13 I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. So everybody loved that 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 scripture, and it, it, people want to hang their hats on being a Christian. Jesus didn't come to start Christianity. So 
He's not coming back for Christians. He said, many will come in my name. Christianity is a form of the name of Christ. He said, many will be deceived. If you thinking that Jesus is coming back for Christians, you are deceived. Jesus is coming back for his people who are Hebrew Israelites. That's who he died for. That's who he came for. That's who he's coming back for. That's who he rose again on the third day for. Praise the name of the Lord. So we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. But we have to believe the word of God. And we have to do what the word of God says to do. The Lord will make sure we have what we need if we seek the kingdom of God first. That's all you got to do. It's not about seeking all this other stuff. That's why you in want. Because you're not seeking the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. And you don't know how to be content with what you already have. Verse 14. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. So Paul is saying that when he was going through, when he didn't have anything, he was lacking. He's saying the Philippians, they communicated unto him. They helped him out. <laughs> we got you back, brother Paul. Whatever you're going through, brother. <clears throat> Somebody, some, some, we, we got you, man. <laughs> That's how we're supposed to be. But now everybody got their own stuff. Like, I got mine. You better go get yours. <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to be as becoming saints. We're the saints of God. We're the children of God. We're the chosen people of God. We're supposed to watch out for one another, have each other's back. Yeah, we're supposed to preach the gospel of the kingdom to Israel. And we're scattered everywhere in the world. So we don't know exactly who we are or where we are. <clears throat> Sometimes we're going to need some help. But when we go to ask for help, it's for the kingdom. It's not for our own fleshly need and want. It's for, for, for building up the kingdom of heaven. See, that's been the problem. These 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers, they've been consuming the, the, the wealth upon the, their own flesh, their own self. <laughs> Covetousness. <laughs> that's why they're driving around in these big, fan fancy cars and have a big old house and on the airplane and all this crazy stuff. That's Christianity for you. <clears throat> Verse 15. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. So Paul is encouraging the Philippians, who are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, the ten tribes of, this, uh, of the northern kingdom that are scattered amongst the Gentiles. He said, when I started the beginning of the gospel and, and departed to Macedonia, no, no other body of Christ, uh, 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 of Israel, the church, communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. And so that's how it is. Everybody <laughs> supposed to be doing what they supposed to do, but everybody don't do what they supposed to do. So when I see that, I just say people are people. <clears throat> Jesus told his disciples, y'all need to pray. I'm going over here and pray. Y'all need to tarry with me. <clears throat> he came and they were sleeping. <clears throat> people supposed to do what they supposed to do, but they're going to do what they're going to do. You can't hold it against them. You just got to love them. And so, but you got to grow up in the word. You got to you gotta become mature in the word of God and do what it says to do. You can't stay a babe in the word. Verse 16, For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. So Paul is going on how much the Philippians encouraged him in the Lord by ensuring that he had whatever he need in his in his uh, travels in, in ministering and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. When he went to Thessal Thessalonica, Thessalonica uh, he said, y'all help me more than once. 
Verse 17, not because I desire to give, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. And so that's what it's all about, bearing fruit. If we are of the Lord, we need to be bearing some fruit. And if you ain't doing nothing, then you ain't bearing no fruit. You got to be doing something. <laughs> Jesus gave those gifts to those folk. And he came back and said, okay, what, what's been going on? One person said, Lord, you gave me this. I've increased it tenfold. Lord, you gave me this. I've increased it. The other one said, Lord, I hid mine in the dirt. In the ground. Here it is. He said, you wicked and wasteful, slowful servant. He killed him. Bring him and kill him. Take what he has and give it to the one that has the lot. But they said, Lord, he already has some. Well, he's, he's wicked. He's a wicked servant. Take him and kill him. God ain't playing. Like he wasn't playing with Israel in the wilderness. A lot of them didn't make it into the promised land. The same way, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, don't expect to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Sitting on your laurels, watching soap operas or whatever, YouTube and Facebook and <clears throat> whatever you're doing, you're supposed to be working toward the kingdom of heaven. That's what you're supposed to be doing. One way, shape, form, or fashion. <laughs> Encouraging your other brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse 18. But I have all and abound. I am full. Having received of Epiraphidus. Epiraphidotus. The things which were sent from you. An odor of sweet smell. A sacrifice acceptable well pleasing to, to God. So Paul is saying, I'm blessed. I'm full of y'all. <laughs> y'all have blessed me more than I could ever ask for or imagine. And the stuff that y'all gave to my brother to bring unto me, I'm grateful and I'm thankful. Praise the name of the Lord. That's how we should be toward one another. None of us should be suffering as becoming saint, as becoming the body of Christ. We all should be working together for the kingdom of heaven, sharing with one another, ensuring that we all have what we need and want, that the gospel of the kingdom can get preached to everywhere in the world, to Israel. Verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When you're doing the work of the kingdom of God, the Lord will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because you're doing the work of the Lord. You're doing the work of the kingdom. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But these 501c3 corporations, Antichrist church system, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they're just building buildings. <laughs> Got you paying for them. Talking about bringing your tithe and want more membership. That's not the work of the kingdom, building these buildings. <laughs> Jesus ain't told nobody to go build buildings. He said, go preach to all nations, the kingdom of heaven. He that believe will be saved. He that does not believe will be damned. <laughs> Verse 20. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So God is our Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory and honor always be to God the Father. That's who we serve. That's who we repent to. And where we worship the Lord Jesus Christ for saving us and forgiving us of our sin. Verse 21, salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. So all the saints are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. That's who we are. We are the saints. We are the elect <laughs> in Christ Jesus. With that, if we believe, you got to understand, Israel, you only get into the kingdom of heaven if you believe the gospel of the kingdom about Jesus, that he's the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior 
of Israel. You don't get in the kingdom of heaven just because you're Israel. But you got to obey the word of God and do what it says to do. And believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And that he died and rose on the third day. Verse 22. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. So, he says Caesar's household. Now, he's not talking about Japheth Gentiles in Caesar's household. He's talking about Hebrew Israelites that's in Caesar's household. They're servants. <laughs> that's all we are. We're servants. Everywhere we are, we're servants. I don't care what title you may have. You may even be cheap like Cornelius was a centurion. <laughs> but he's a servant. He's a Hebrew Israelite. He got man under him. He's, a, he's, he's over people. But he's a Hebrew Israelite. And a lot of people have got found it hard to believe that Cornelius is a Hebrew Israelite. Because your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers don't tell you that. They say, oh, he's just a Gentile. Yeah, he's a Gentile, a Hebrew Israelite of the northern kingdom that's scattered among the Gentiles. That's who the word of God is for. That's who the word of God is to. People take the scriptures out of context and try to apply it to everybody. That's why you have Christianity, a false doctrine. And that's why many are deceived. Jesus didn't come to start Christianity. So people that are not Israel, is not, they're not being, Jesus is not coming back for them. Period. He's only coming back for Israel, and he knows who they are. You got to understand this parable. Jesus said there's two kind of people in the world, the wheat and the tares. He said, let them both grow together, and at the harvest, the angel is going to come, and he's going to, the, the tares will be burned up, cast into the fire, but the wheat will be taken into the barn. So the Lord knows who the tares are, and he knows who the wheat are. The wheat is Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham that believe the word of God and do it. The tares is everybody else in the world. He said they are the children of the devil. And if they Israel, they, they don't believe the gospel of the kingdom, so they consider it a tear. So that's what you got to understand when you're interpreting the scriptures. Verse 23, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.